pump trying to get back to the boat, so anyway. <laughs> Going tropical north Queensland, eh? <laughs> That's what it looks like when it's blowing 30 knots. So, it's not, um... Oh my god. Oh dear. <laughs> Get me up there. Yeah, yeah, just settle down. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Hey, up. Do you want to know what one of the best things is? Because there's four toilets on board. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to share one with her, mate. Oh my god, I'm and She's the worst. Awesome. And there's your Mackie, hey? <laughs> ah, I'm stoked with that. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another episode. Hey, this one's going to be something fairly well different to what we normally do, but you have seen us do it before. If you've watched our vids for a while, we did a Whit Sundays trip last year where we sailed a bare boat charter around the islands for five nights. Now we, um, the last day of the last year we've been trying to figure out how can we make that trip better. So what have we done this year? We've bought a family. So to this trip we've got our mates, the Jacksons along. You might have seen them from some other WA vids. They're going to come along and spend a week with us on a Whit Sunday ready yacht. We're going to cruise the islands. We're going to do some fishing, some snorkeling, a few beers, check out a few islands. So stay tuned, we'll show you all about it. First Arvo on the boat, dear, and we've got a little special surprise for our guests this time, don't we? Oh, we hey? do. Seafood oh. pineapple, <laughs> wine, happy days. Rushing. Anyway, so it takes us, uh, I don't know, it took us about 45 minutes to an hour to load everything onto the boat, get it all packed up, make the beds, fill the fridges, and then crack a couple of cold ones. And now the Savo, the sun is going down yeah, in Shoot no, Harbour here. It's absolutely brilliant spot. Highly recommend getting this sleep aboard the first night because it gives you a chance to figure out the boat, pack all your stuff, and uh, like us, we've already forgotten we've some already, stuff I, here. I literally left five bottles of wine under the bed in the bed. Anyway, so we'll be going back in the morning. <laughs> the key thing. But we're doing pretty good. We're going to sit here at the Savo, chat down on a few prawns, have a couple of tins, and then uh, they reckon the fishing's pretty hot in here because they're doing some work over the back there. So we'll flick a few baits around, see if we can't get a couple of fillets before we leave the harbour. And then tomorrow we'll do some training and we'll be out of here. So anyway, cheers guys. Cheers! First cast, mate, a little prawn <laughs> off the back of the boat in Shoot Harbour. Are you serious? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> good job! Right, wait. So good. I've got a good feeling, mate. Right? Right. 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 My turn! Right. Second cast, and then Ruby got one. A little yeah. blue boat. Hey, look at that. These are dead set the best eating fish if they're big enough to keep. Oh, nice! Oh, it's a coral trout! We haven't even left the harbour yet. We got a trout. Hey, how good Good morning. On day two, this is going to be our first day when we leave Shoot Harbour. First things first, coffee with me, main man Jacko. He brought his aero press along, so there is a little generator on board. So when you're offshore, you can run a little coffee machine if you want, but. It's a pain in the bum starting the jenny all the time. So you're best off bringing an, like an AeroPress or some plunger coffee. Uh, plan for today is eight o'clock. The crew come down and teach us about how to sail the boat, um, which we need before they let us loose out there. Uh, it takes about three hours and we'll run through all the navigation stuff, how to sail, um, everything on the boat and they teach you. So you, you can rock up here not knowing a thing 
And uh, after these three hours, you'll be able to sail out and cruise it with Sundays, no drama. So from there, I don't know, we're just going to have to look at the wind. It's a little bit windy today. I'll take you for a look. You'll probably hear it. It's a little bit windy looking out into the bay. So we'll just have to check the Magic Miles book, see where it looks like a good anchorage. We'll just make our way there for the Savo. But nice cruisy day, I think. A couple of hours, and we'll head over and find somewhere nice and safe. Alrighty, so like I told ya, uh, one of the crew come down and they're gonna run us through a few points on how to sail safely, how to pick up a mooring, how to navigate, just to enable you to have all the info you need to get out there and sail you know, safely yourself. So this is Donna. Say good day, Donna. Hey guys. <laughs> so she is gonna take us through everything we need to know. Um, just give me a quick five, mate. Run us through a few points on what you're gonna teach us to be able to get out there and sail safely. Okay, so firstly, we're just gonna do a full brief, which is just learning the area for yep. Sunday. Yep. So we can't lose you for a start. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> so this is the chart that we're using for today. So we do have a book, which we call the Bible. It's called The 100 Magic Miles. It has absolutely everything in it. Okay. Um, and we will go through this book Point by point, and everything that I say, you don't need to remember um, because everything is also in the book. So we just touch on places of interest and try and get you to the best places to get you the best experience. Awesome. All right, let's get into it. What do you reckon, mate? You'll be able to handle this big rig? Of course I will, mate. <laughs> We've still got the, the instructor on board. We can't get too cocky yet. <laughs> we can't go wrong. But you can probably hear it. It is a bit windy. I'm trying to protect the mic a bit. Um, it's fairly windy. We've got strong wind warnings for probably 20 to 30 knots over the next few days. But Donna's going to teach us how we can just sort of restrict the amount of sail we use so we can still get it up and cruise around where we want to go. So. I'll tell you more about that later. We can plan our trip by using the maps and the weather. But for now, we've got an hour or so of learning how to sail this big girl. So we've had a couple of hours out there with Donna and she's she's sorted it all out for us, mate. I know it was, it was rough. We did about how many tacks? Probably 15 tacks and we've got it all sorted. So now we're, we're let loose on the open seas. But thanks a lot, mate. We've been through our checklist. We've signed it all off. You're welcome. Happy days. Enjoy your trip. Thanks, eh? Cheers, Knuckles. Boom. <laughs> we go, eh? First mooring. Nailed it. Look at that. Well done, bro. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at that. First effort. We nailed it. Bang on. Look at How good is this? In this average spot. Oh. Oh. So I'll tell you what. Yeah, we can do it with 20 we've been 20. through a few spots today, but we've battled a bit of wind and we've ended up at this awesome place called Palm Bay. Now they've got a couple of moorings out the front. Beck just rang them. You've got to ring ahead. It's 50 bucks for the night to pull up on the mooring and another 100 if you want to go and use all the resort facilities on there. Um, but we can pull up here. We can go into the beach. We can swim. And you know what the best thing is? It's blowing 25 knots south easterly. And here. Can't really feel it, honey. It is mint. It's so good. So there you go. We're going to G it up, have something to eat, get the tinny off. And uh, for the tender. <laughs> I was going to say, we don't have a tinny. Uh, and know. we're going to go and hit the beach. These kids need a swim. Oh, yeah. They've been on the boat for all day, really. Oh, yeah. so need and, to get and I need a beer. Need so. <laughs> there you go. Wave yep. to mum. Yep, yep. Yep, yep.
So it's day two and we've just started ferrying everyone across. So if you have a look over here, Sam and Jacko have got the kids and we're going to spend the day at the Palm Bay Resort. So we're tackling a little bit of weather like we've come across on our travels now and then you can't yeah. control the weather. So we've got fairly hectic southeasterly blowing across the passage and we're like, well, why don't we just chill out here for the day and you can go and use all the resort facilities at Palm Bay. So it's going to cost us... $1.90 to more bucks. here for the night for both the families and to access the facilities. They've got like a little um, mini mart over there. Yeah. They've got the pool, tennis court. They've got wood-fired pizzas. Oh, nice. They've got a sunset lounge and yeah. It's so good. And a beach swing and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So it's just going to be a lot better for everyone. It's going to be comfortable, calm, and we can just run the kids ragged in the pool. Yeah. So that's the plan for today. We might, uh, me and Jacko might go for a fish somewhere yeah. today, just around the corner here. It's a couple of nice headlands and that sort of thing. But as you can see out the back here, it, we're only in um, in the little like the passage close to Shoot Harbour. We're not even out in the Whit Sunday Passage yet, so we're just going to chill here and make it more comfortable for everyone. So in these strong wind warnings, they advise you not to sail. So um, you just have to motor everywhere, and we really want to sail from here up towards Nara Inlet. So we'll just wait for tomorrow and see if the wind drops out a bit, and then we can throw up our sail and our front sail, and we can um, chuff on up to Nara Inlet and around to Stonehaven. And then hopefully, it looks like the end of the week's gonna get a bit, a little bit better. So me and Jacko are ditched the wives and the kids back at the boat. And we've come around the corner in the dinghy, uh, just mainly to get out of the wind, but we're gonna throw a few lures at these rocks and these mangroves here. So you just never know, mate, hey? We'll have a crack, have a flick for an hour or so. It's the top of the tide, hopefully. Grab a little trevally or queenie or I don't know, something. A bit of dinner would be great. But anyway, if we get something, I'll show you better. Well, we didn't make it too long, eh? Right? Got about four past there. <laughs> Before this come in, we're just getting pumped trying to get back to the boat. So, anyway, <laughs> go in tropical North Queensland, eh? <laughs> All right, tell me a story, dear. What's going on? All right, so Macon Spag Bolt, the kids. Hang on, hang on, hold it there. What is happening here? <laughs> <I'm> fishing. <laughs> it's my bad here. Hey, these crazy cats, like, they're city slickers from the Gold Coast, and all I want to do is go fishing in the Whit Sundays, and we can't stop them. Hey, rain, hail, or shine. They're going fishing. So, anyway, me too. I'll be out there soon too. But I don't know if I could bring myself to wear one of those yellow suits. Oh, they look cool. But anyway, dinner for the kids. Um, yeah, so far we actually just had a bucket load of pizza over on the island, Palm Resort. Palm Bay, yep. So we're not really hungry tonight, but the kids always the kids are. are. So. Just making up a big batch of spag bowl. They can have that tonight and tomorrow night if they want. So. They can. But I tell you what, it was really good over there. Um, because we're in the tropics, right? We're in tropical North Queensland. You're going to get bad weather now and then. But there is options to go and hide in bad weather. So we've hit one at Palm Bay. You can also go to Hamilton Island, which we'll probably try and sneak to tomorrow because we're going to cop a couple more days of this and then it gets really good for us. But there's options. So if it does blow up, you can go and hide and you can still have a lot of fun while you're out on the charter. So don't let that worry you. I know it's a lot of questions we get from others like, Weather looks pretty average, are we gonna be okay, this yeah. and that. Yes, you'll be okay. You make your own fun, and there is lots of places to go. Um, and Palm Bay, it was wicked. I hope, I really hope the sun comes out tomorrow yeah. and we can show you what it looks like Such a pretty in good weather. Oh, really pretty. Kids just swam flat out. We had wood-fired pizzas, we played tennis. Um, 
It was great, mate. Had a couple of beers. It was the best. It was the best, wasn't it? I really. I was better than sitting on the boat. <laughs> Way better. Well, we've been rocking around out here. It's a little bit yeah. rough. So it was great to get the kids in there and off. But anyway, um, yeah, Big Spout Bowl. What, um, Don't got, mind the schmozzle here. All your cooking facilities on board, so you can cook up big meals for everyone. Yeah. And there's also the barbecue outside and a couple of legends in their yellow raincoats. So there you go. <laughs> you gonna put your fish on there, mate, or what? <laughs> oh, have a look at him, would you? Uh, oh, good luck. I ain't coming out there. Oh, they even match the boat. <laughs> Sunday passage. I'm just going to give you a look at what it looks like when it's blowing 30 knots. So it's not um, ridiculously comfortable, but it's also not too bad either. Like you've got to remember, it is a big cat, it's a 40 foot cat. Sorry about the water on the lens. So it's a little bit lumpy, but I reckon we'll get across here in under an hour, an hour and a half. We're sitting on about five and a half knots just cruising. Because it's over this 25, 30 knots, we're not advised to put the sails up. And you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable either in this sort of wind. So anyway, get going. We'll show you Hamilton Island Marina when we get there. Hey, this is about as bad as you're going to get it up here. Look at this. Yeah, here's the Hamilton Island Marina. So what you do, when you come in, you jump on your radio, you switch it to channel 68 call up the marina and say, yeah, we're at the front, uh, ready to come in. What they will do is tell you to prepare your boat. So you throw a couple of uh, benders off the side and you get a bow rope and a stern rope ready to tie up to the berth in there. And then you just sort of wait around the front until they send out a little skiff and uh, he'll sort of concierge you in and direct you on to the berth that you're in. So uh, it's a little bit hectic, um, but I've done it before and don't let it worry you too much. You'll get in there all right. And then uh, we'll be out of this wind. But it only took us maybe no more than an hour and a half to get across. And it was really okay, so. Oh my God. Oh dear. That. <laughs> Thanks for being so calm. Yeah. <laughs> what did you get, Rui? A baby pie. <laughs> get into it. Oh, that looks so good, mate. Mm, it is. How good is hey, good this? Spin around here. Check out the backdrop, would you? To have a pie. Mm -hmm. Hey? It's crazy. Such a good spot, especially when you get off the boat. You've been rocking and rolling a bit. And all you want to do is get something into your guts. I do put too much. Yeah. Oh, what'd you get, Brett? Sausage roll. Oh, you want to do it? Okay. What'd you get? I just got a wrap. Oh. Yeah, veggie wrap. There you go. So boring. I know. I know. I was going to say that. Veggie wraps are boring. Can I have a bite? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That one's gnarly. <laughs> so this one's done. Mm -hmm. Come on. 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 There's only this one little hill. It's probably like 200 meters to get up here. And then you'll see 
there's a sign. There we go, there's the resort accommodation and One Tree Hill. We'll have to get you up to One Tree yeah, Hill to Savo too. So good. There's a sunset cocktail bar up there. And uh, I don't know if you want to walk up there though, it's up that hill. Yeah, we have to push your bike. I'm here for a So we are leaving Hamilton Island this morning out of the marina and um, we're going to head up to a couple of spots to show you today. We're going to swing in, stay on the western side out of the wind. We're going to drop into a little place called Nara Inlet where we might have uh, a bit of lunch and check that out. Then we'll keep poking around the corner to another place called Stonehaven um, and we're going to try and pick up a mooring there for the night. But uh, it's a nice little drive up here on the inside. It's calm, it's scenic, and if we can get to Stonehaven, we can get the kids off and have a swim. Yeah, but, um, keen pretty keen to get into Nara though. We have never stayed there. We missed it last time we went from Sid Harbour straight round to Blue Pearl. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Sun's out, wind's dying off. Let's get into it. For sailing, hello. <laughs> so we've got the front sail up. Because we have got strong wind warnings, um, they advise you not to put your main one up. So we've just chucked this front one up and we're sailing across the Nara Inlet, which is directly over there. So we're just going to sort of zigzag our way over there with this front sail up. And uh, it's kind of nice, mate. Throttles are shut down, Jacko, and we're just cruising. We're into it. Doing five knots. Got a couple yep. of rods kicking out the back. Perfect trolling speed for a Mackie, about five or six knots. And we're chewing no fuel. Hey, yeah, all we need now is a Mackie. So, <laughs> what do you reckon? We're gonna catch a fish or what? Yeah. yeah. This is great. Look at this. All right, girls, put the big one up, would you? Come on. Well done. Hey, sails are up. Come on. Well, where's the captain's hat? Yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> So this is Nara Inlet. We pulled up here. Just going to have a bit of a lunch stop. Look at the sun's come out. Check out the colour of that water, would you? So this inlet, you can go all the way up the back here. There's like another kilometre inlet right up there out of the wind. Good fishing in here. Plenty of safe anchorages. You just drop the anchor. It's like a sandy, muddy bottom. And then check out the rocks in that. It is just so damn nice. A little bit breezy, but you'll hear that when I come up the top here. Still blowing in here, it's like a, it's turned a bit east, southeasterly. So we're just gonna have lunch here. Duck out of the wind. We're gonna have lunch here and then we'll scoot around the corner to Stonehaven, which is um, on the other side of that big mountain there. So hopefully we'll be fully out of the wind and we can pick up a mooring there, get the kids out in the dinghy and we'll go into the beach and go snorkeling and stuff. But have a flick here for a while. Jacko just got bitten off on a stick bait out here, so might be a few. Queenies or something kicking around, but that's the plan. Check it out if you want to get into Nara Inlet. Mate, this is just speckled. There's some bushwalks up the end there. And also they reckon if it's been raining heavy, there's like a waterfall up there as well. So anyway, that's us. I'll show you Stonehaven when we get there. Alrighty, so we have just made it to Stonehaven and you have to check this out because this is epic. Look at this. There's about 13 moorings all up. There's a heap of boats in here, but we've just spotted a couple. Tucked away up in here, right up in this little bay is a couple of blue moorings. We are gonna pull up in there and set up for the other. So it's only like 
didn't get any fish on the way over. Saw a couple of big mackerel jump out. But we've been trolling, trolling, trolling. We still can't manage to get one. But anyway, we're going to pull up here at Stonehaven for the night. And um, today, we're going to let the girls. The girls are going to pick up the mooring. So I'll take the GoPro up the front and see if we can't give you a good laugh, eh? So, she's quietly confident, Sam, I reckon. She's got the jacket off, the gun's out, she's ready to pick it up. Righto, so as you're coming up on the mooring, you can check where the tag end of the rope is. Just follow that up so you don't run over the top of it. Um, we'll get the Bex up there on the throttles. We'll get Sam to pick this up. You can see the rope tag hanging down there. Just try and pick up the blue end with your hook. What do you reckon, Sam? Yeah, All right, yeah, back's back in there on the throttles. How are you going, dude? Yeah, I'm all over it. All right, she's going to pick it up. Oh, can I reach it? I can't reach it. Uh, oh, I think I've got it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. How you going, Sam? You got it there? Oh, hey, I pulled it up. Oh, I got some mooring. Oh, I'm an absolute legend. Oh, I need some help. Quick, help me. Help me. No, you'll be right. There we go. Just pick it up, chuck it through there, and then you put it on the big cleat on the front of your cat there so you don't drift away overnight. Awesome mate, well done Sambo, yeah. Oh here I am, I did nothing, I'll come down and clap anyway. Oh yeah, back the legend. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm so amazing. Oh gosh, I'm good. Oh, I'm the best ever. Oh, just, just look at me. Look at this. There we go. Well done girls. Hey, if they can do it mate, I reckon anyone can. What do you think about that? <laughs> Here we go. That's how you pick up, pick up a mooring with a couple of shearers. Oh yeah, oh so good. Yep. Billy. Okay, what is it? Uh, whiting. Whiting. Oh, it's coming back. Dad called it. <laughs> oh, you missed it. There you go. Get me up, Sam. Yeah, yeah, just settle down. Here we go. He's like a pirate. Hey, up. Oh. Hey! <laughs> 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 Just climb up the ladder there. Just grab the rope, Jack. Oh, that's all right. Thanks so much for the laugh, dear. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> hey? That was so hilarious. Oh my god. None of you even helped. I saved your glasses. Thank you. Oh, oh, you. Oh, oh, you. We just showed you how not <laughs> to pull your tender up. All right? So whatever you do, don't do what Beck did. Unless you want to give everyone a good laugh. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, that's another day done and dusted, dear. Hey, thanks for the laugh today. So embarrassing. I actually and made I my day. Actually, I don't think you can get any better than that. But on our last trip, I nailed it every time. And Justin jinxed me. Not today, and in front of all our friends as well. Yeah. So well done. In front of you guys as well. <laughs> but hey, check this out. This is our sunset here at, where are we? I've forgotten again. Stonehaven. Stonehaven. Check it out, mate. Kids are just having a snag in bread tonight. And we are going to actually cook up a bit of reef and beef on the barbie. So we've got oh. a wicked steak. Jacko's going to throw a couple of prawns on the hot plate as well. 
and hopefully surf and turf. Hopefully his little drone doesn't land in the water. Because last time I was here, <laughs> mine ended up in the drink about 200 meters that way. So we wasn't quite sure if this place was cursed for drones. But anyway, I think we got a few good shots. We'll chill out tonight, have a couple of wines. Bit of reef and beef ballad. Oh Jesus! <laughs> He's keen, isn't he? Gonna go in the water for sure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Alright, we'll leave you with that. Watch that sun go down. How good is that? The sun has gone down and we've got the best little treat here. Have a look at dinner, would you? Are you actually serious? I'll put my phone light on it so you can see it. Reef and beef with Sunday yacht style, hey? Oh my goodness. A bit of garlic sauce on top. What do you reckon, girls? So good. So good, my God. <laughs> Cheers to that, Jacko. Where's your drink, bud? Into it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, girls. Cheers. Cheers. Alrighty, so trip planning. Now you're going to have to make some sort of plan of attack on where you want to stay and how you're going to cruise around the islands on your trip. Now they teach you all this in your pre-trip briefing, in your induction with the trainer, but pretty much this is your bible while you're on board. It's 100 magic miles of the Great Barrier Reef. You get that one and you get this big map here. So this shows the area where you're allowed to travel and your limits and where you can go in your bare boat charter yacht, right? So, we come up with a plan with um, Karen on the first day just to where we're going to anchor each night and that's just a rough plan and then you can change it depending on what happens with the wind and the swell and the weather and all that and what you want to do. So in this book is what it shows you all. So each anchorage is listed and it tells you with the blue arrows which one is protected in what sort of winds and how strong. If you can anchor there, if you can moor there, if you can snorkel there, if you can fish there. Pretty much everything you need to know is in this book. So you just refer from this map to this book. And then um, you can also, well they teach you how long it takes you to get from spot to spot as well. So there you go, we've come across, just to give you a quick idea. Um, this is Shoot Harbour. We came out over here into Palm Bay because it was super protected from the wind. And we've come out and across over to Hamilton Island to hide out from the wind for a while. And then yesterday we come all the way up here through Sid Harbour, across here to Nara Inlet for lunch, and around here to Stonehaven for our mooring last night. So you can go a fair way, you know, and even that was only a couple of hours travel, sitting at about six knots in these things. So it looks like a long way, but you can cover a lot of ground. Uh, today, quick one, we are just gonna duck across to Langford Island Reef, round the Blue Pearl, and then we're gonna end up in Butterfly Bay. So not far to go, and then we'll have a big day tomorrow to cruise around, go and see Hill Inlet, Whitehaven Beach, pull up at Chalkies for the night, and then we can make our way home the next day. So there you go, it might seem like a lot trying to plan your own trip around if you've never done any sailing, but they teach you all this stuff and the books are so easy to read, plus you've got the nav up on your chart plotter and that as well. So it's really, it's actually fun. <laughs> So there you go, that's how you navigate your own fair boat chart around the Lit Sundays. Um, finish my coffee and we'll be out of here. Yeah, very good morning there guys, uh, what's your plan for today? Yeah mate, we are currently at Stonehaven, we're just going to poke around the Blue Pearl and um, Butterfly Bay. We'll just see what's happening there and all that. More up in Butterfly or Blue Pearl depending on conditions mate. Yeah, no worries at all. Blue Pearl's probably a little bit better from east. Easterly winds and Butterfly Bay, like you probably heard. Just get as far up into the bay as you can and it'll be a lot calmer up there. No dramas, mate. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. So they call you on skids. They give you a weather condition report sort of every morning and every hour. And you just check in with them so they know where you are. That way if you don't call in like three times in a row they can send someone looking for you keep you safe 
they also give you updates on conditions like that. So yeah, you're probably better off to stay at Blue Pool or get right up into Butterfly. So handy info, and that's from the Whitsunday Renny Yacht Base over in Shoot Harbour. There you go. All right, one of the big questions we had from the last trip we did was like, would there be enough room on the boat to take two families? Well, if you haven't noticed already on this trip, we've had two families on there, and I think we've had plenty of room. Both of us are caravanners, so we're used to living in small spaces, but I'll give you a little quick tour of the boat to show you where everyone's been living, so you can sort of put it in your heads and how you're gonna get some space between each other when you're on the boat all together, right? So in the main living area, huge big dining table, swing around this way, Vic. You've got all your sort of controls and circuit board and that. This side, big double doors that slide open, and then you've got a big seating area out there out the back, so we've been eating out there most nights. You've also got another one out in front. Full kitchen, so you've got all your sort of creature comforts at home with a gas stove, gas oven. There's an inverter, you can run the generator. We've bought our Nutribullet and our coffee machine, that sort of thing. Charge computers, cameras, you've got all the facilities on board you need. And then swing round, we've kept all our food sort of on the top, under the floor, <laughs> under the seats. There's lots of little hidden storage hatches and that sort of thing. So all we've had to bring was our own food and uh, drinks and a couple of appliances. Everything else is supplied. So there you go, that's all the room up here. Now I'm gonna swing around, I'm gonna show you Beck. Beck's gonna take you downstairs where everyone's living, right? So you've got, we, go. we have got four adults, six children on board. We have, so down this side we've got double beds and I'll show you down where the kids have been sleeping in this triple down here, so come on in. So us adults have been and, sleeping in the back berths. Yeah, and it's pretty much, I'd say that would be a queen size, but it's quite big. Lots of room and you've got these little nooks up the top here and we've been popping our clothes in these cupboards here so heaps of room also get your own bathroom each as well so That's this it. bathroom so a, here is ours yeah there's but four I'll, bathrooms on board four bedrooms how good's that but i'll take you to the kids little section now our go. kids chose to all sleep on the one bed here um but the first night charlie was up the back and i think she didn't like it she wanted to be with the boys so you can see here you can fit essentially four kids down here this is where the kids have been sleeping same deal they've got their little um nooks up here and then these cupboards for their clothes yep. and then i'll show you the bathroom there's also in each bedroom there's like usb sockets and yeah, stuff for so, charging ipads yeah. and phones and that so and all the bathrooms are identical so we'll just show you the one so there's You've got your shower over here. Behind this mirror, you can stash your toiletries. A little vanity. Like vanity and I'll come and in here, and then around you come to the toilet. So like we said, we're used to caravan yeah, living. There's actually a lot of room, yeah. really. And you don't spend a lot of your time down here anyway. You're up on the deck, you're in the water and things, so. Yeah. Hey, do you want to know what one of the best things is? Because there's four toilets on board. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to share one with her, mate. Oh my God, I'll She's the worst. Hey? You, you're the one who's She stinks the whole boat out, this one. That's you, mate. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's a little quick trip around. Um, and there's heaps of room, mate, honestly. There is, there's loads. Come in here, Sam. What do you reckon, Jacko, Sam? Plenty of room? Yeah. Two, two families? Excuse yeah. the pun, but there's boat loads of room. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Ten people, ten people, and it's a 44 foot yacht. So yeah. it's been super comfortable. Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. So there you so go. It's like a little home on. On floats. water. There you go. You used to say <laughs> home on wheels, don't you? Home on something. Hey, hold this. So I just got a couple more frequently asked questions or things that we got asked on our last trip. Um, so obviously, you guys want to know them. Do you have enough water on board for two families? Well, Depending on your boat, I suppose you'd have to check what the literage is, but up front here in the two front hatches is a thousand litres of water. So if you can't make do for five to seven nights, then um, you're doing something wrong. You have too long showers. <laughs> you've but got a leak. You can also fill up your water tanks at Hamilton Island if you pull in there for a night as well. Now, um, do you have to sail or can you just motor? Um, I'm just going to turn this radio here. Yeah? So you can opt to do extra sail training if you really want to sail around. Me and Jacko did that this time because we wanted to put the sails up, but because we've had 25 plus knot winds, they advise not to sail too much because we are inexperienced. I'd be happy anywhere five to 15, I'd throw them up and we'd boost everywhere, but it is pretty hectic and we're getting locked, lots of big gusts up to 60 k's an hour. So we've opted to either just run the front sail and motor um, or just motor. So you don't have to sail if you feel unsafe. Don't do anything that you feel unsafe. Um, and we've run through planning. You do have to plan your itinerary. You can have some assistance. They will tell you the, the, like an advised route and some good anchorages of what you want to do and where you want to go. And what else we got? Sail, water, space, training, plenty of training. And like, 
If you don't feel like you've quite got the gist of it before you leave the harbour, let them know. They'll spend another few hours with you and before you leave, just to get those questions out of your head. So that's everything you asked us from the last trip. I hope that helps you out. But anyway, cheer. All right, before we left Ely Beach, we stopped in. Anaconda had got heaps of this <laughs> blow-up gear. We thought we couldn't come out of with Sundays without one. No, and it so, had to be a unicorn. Well, I got all my fishing gear, so I had to buy something for Beck. Sweet. Beck got her little unicorn. So off you go. Go for a float, darling. This is perfect. This is Blue Pearl Bay, and there is no current here. The kids are just jumping off. Look at all these batfish down here. They're just swimming around, and we're soon to have a big blow-up unicorn floating around as well. Hey? <laughs> You don't look real comfy in there. <laughs> That's a bit better. Uh. Get those feet up. Oh. <laughs> yes. Two, three, jump. Jump, Billy. Go, All right, take two. Let's go, dear. <laughs> Full load of beach gear. Let's drop you in the drink again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, so we pulled up at um, Blue Pearl Bay. We're just going to ferry everyone across. There's a mad little snorkeling spot in here. It's super glassy and calm. And we'll get in here on the beach, cook up a bit of lunch, and the kids can just swim for hours. And we'll probably end up staying here the night because it's probably one of the calmest spots at the moment in this easterly. What a way to spend the Arvo, eh? Full day snorkeling over here at Blue Pearl. And now we've got a platter on the front deck made by the lovely wife and, oh. the, and the lovely Sambo. Actually, I think Paul helped out a little bit too. That probably did the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right too. Uh, the girls have had a fantastic holiday because the lads have been on pretty much waiting hand and foot on them. Oh, That's how it goes. So of it. It's worked out pretty well for it's these girls. It's been a good balance between the It has. The but how good is this front deck, mate? It's so cool. This is killer. And look at this. Sun is going to go down over here. Talk. We're going to spend the night here tonight because it is still a little bit blowy. And then um, we'll talk to base in the morning and figure out where we're going to go. But for tonight, it's sunset, beers, a bit of cabana, a bit of cheese, a bit of blue cheese. We get to sit here and look at the beach at Blue Pearl Bay and watch the sun go down. Anyway, as we do every Arvo, cheers. Cheers to cheers. that. <laughs> cheers to that. Cheers. Hey! <laughs> Night. So this one is called Butterfly Bay. Um, for us, it's probably the best snorkeling we found on our trip. Super protected. You're like up in this big V that's really shallow. Like you can pick up a mooring like we have right up in the very end. I'll get back to show you. And then the coral's like literally 10 meters off the back of the boat. So we'll strap these on, get the kids in, go for a bit of a swim. I'll take a GoPro, see if I can't find some fish for you. But have a look at that, mate. How crazy is it? Go. So two big coral trout. Cool. Starfish. Hey Nemo, Jackson Nemo. Oh. And Dory. Killed it. <laughs> hey, there's some massive slaty broom and stuff. Yeah, and then we also too saw loads of um, Spanish flags. Yeah, that was good. It's actually really good. What's up? Good job. It was like creepy and cool at the same time. <laughs> Why is it creepy? 
happy. And oh, because the big fish kept staring at me and like the grub was like, Ooh. creepy fish, eh? Hello. There you go, that was Butterfly Bay. We're going to head back out around the corner now. We're going to head back to Shoot Harbour tomorrow so it's the last night we are going to spend in Sid Harbour because it'll be protected and out of the wind. We sort of had to uh, change our plans this trip to uh, make do with the conditions that we've got. Um, and Sid Harbour is going to be our best option for tonight so we don't have such a big trip home tomorrow. The best thing is we can troll pretty much all the way there and fish for our last night. We need to get some more fish. Hey, we'll be trying. It hasn't been happening for us, but today might be the day. Right, eh? well, we've had a couple of hours of pretty rough stuff. Hey? Yes, just a little <laughs> bit rough. Yeah. We did get beaten up a bit coming this way, but come outside and I'll show you this. We're at a place called Sid Harbour where they recommend you spend like your first or your last night because it's a close sort of anchorage to home base, which is Shoot Harbour. But I'll show you how many boats are here. There's literally, I counted like 32 masts on the way in, and then we've rolled in and a few more. So um, it's a good spot though. Uh, it's a little bit windy. Like obviously it's one of the best spots for us now in this current condition. I reckon it's blowing southerly. We've had a constant 30 knots the whole time. And it's definitely blowing straight up the passage. So straight from the south and you can see all the boats just anchored up here. Um, and you're safe to anchor. It's only like three and a half to five meters of water. It's all sandy, muddy bottom. So we've dropped our anchor. You're allowed to fish here. Uh, so we're just gonna spend the Arvo. This is our last Arvo. I think we've got to head home tomorrow to, um, to shoot Harbour. So we're just gonna chill here, have a fish, have a couple of last night cocktails and chill out and just enjoy it. Be plenty of others doing the same thing by the look of it. I, I will do a count. I reckon there's about 35 different boats in here, which is pretty crazy. When we come through the other day from Hamo, there was probably like five. So it goes to show you what the weather's doing and uh, everyone's thinking the same thing as us. Just hide out. But there you go. Over here, there is a walk over here too. You can pull up on one of these beaches, links to one in Sawmill Bay, and you can do a walk to a lookout. So check your book for that one if you're here. There you go. It's our last night. Hopefully we'll get a few fish and we can show you that. And then um, we'll be heading back to Shoot Harbour tomorrow. This morning we're in Sid Harbour, first cast with a stick bait, and I just had this big Mackie come up and whop it. Of course, it's on the lightest rod I've got, <laughs> and, it's, and it's the last day when we're cooking breakfast. Trying to take me under the boat. Oh man, I really don't think I'm gonna get this in. We will, we will. Oh, we'll have to play it out. He's a good fish, eh? I don't know. Oh, Dad! Oh, why did you have to go that way? He's gone. We've got the anchor rope out. I've got bloody props. I've got everything. All right, here he comes. Come on. Okay. I'll back this drag off a bit because I reckon he's going to go again. How do I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen it come up out of the water and just smash this stick bait. Did he come out of the water? Yeah, the fish did, yeah. Are you kidding? Nah. Jesus. Smoked it. <laughs> he's got to take that freaking boat. Oh, no. Yes, yes, yeah! Yeah! What a Mackie! Hey, oh. let's hold that rod there, Well done, Jacko! <laughs> we'll get him out so he can show ya! Oh, no. Hey, Dad, the last one! Yes! Oh, it only took seven days! <laughs> On the last morning before we go home, there's your Mackie, hey? Ah, I'm stoked with that. Yeah. Right, there goes Sid Harbour in the background. We're heading back to shoot now. It's the last morning, 
So you, you do have to try and be back by 10 a.m. to get your boat back and they can clean it and do whatever for the next people. Um, so we're leaving about 8 a.m. Should be an hour and a half, two hours over to Shoot Harbour where we um, unpack, jump back in the cars and head back to the van. But got lucky this morning, got that little Mackey, um, little spotted mackerel, and then hopefully we're going to troll all the way back across the passage as well, see if we can't hook up something a bit bigger to take home and fill the freezer. But anyway, it's sad actually, last morning cruising home, the weather's really turned it on for the last day. Got some squalls coming through, on about 25 knots outside. So it'll be a little, little bit lumpy going back. It's our last little bit of excitement for the trip. <laughs> We showed you yesterday how it was rough coming around the hole. Now this is coming across the Bit Sunday Passage back to shoot. It's blowing 20 knots. There you go. You know what it's going to be like coming across Bit Sunday Passage in a 20 knot southern wind. It's not too bad. A little bit lovely. We're about to hit a good one here. We've got kids to see us go up and down, but make sure you get everyone laying down downstairs and hanging on to stuff. You hit a couple of big wobbly ones on this. You might see this dead cat the side, it's the only way you can hear me because of the wind. Anyway, another hour, we'll be tucked away in suit armour, it's just over here. Right, oh, that brings us to the end of the trip. We've had seven nights out here on the wind Sundays. I'll swing you around. This is Shoot Harbour. We've just made it back across the passage. So I hope you enjoyed that one. As always, mate, comments, questions, feedback down below. We'll get back to you when we can. But I'm going to take you around, show you everyone, and see what their favourite part was. What's your favourite part, girls? Uh, snorkeling and jumping off the boat. I like it. What was your favourite part, Bear? Mine was snorkeling, jumping off the boat, and uh, swimming. Swimming. You beauty. Come around here with Sambo. What was your favourite part, Sambo? Um, oh, it's all pretty good, but is it Stonehaven? Stonehaven was magic. Oh, that was definitely. beautiful, wasn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I saw your answer. Anyway, what was your favourite, babe? I was going to say, um, Oh my god, I can't even say it. Stonehaven, but also my favourite part was falling off the damn boat. Ah, oh, that was my favourite part too. What was your favourite part, Jacko? Snorkeling. Snorkeling, good job. Come here, dear. Come, big fella, what was your favourite part of the trip? Uh, Stonehaven and a couple of rockies and you with the yachty, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, well, my favourite part, I think, apart from most of it, you know, fishing, catching fish is my favourite part. But I think having this, having another family on board, having yeah. some mates, having the kids have some friends together, true, having yeah. beers together like this. We've done this trip before and we've always asked ourselves, how can we make it better? And I think that's the only way we can make it better was to bring mates along. So yeah. cheers guys. Yeah. Cheers. That was fantastic. So anyway, like the same again, hit us up with some questions. Thanks heaps, eh? I wish I was above the center of attention, but I'm not I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure, uh oh mm. I'm posting pictures, trying to be someone I'm not It feels just like I'm lying to you I fake it, stage it, trying to live some perfect life I know I'm wasting time